What is up everybody? It's Trevor Parker from the 60s and we are here for episode number two of building a backyard trimaran and also trying to design. Uh, the point of this video, I want to kind of go into some of my drawings and kind of show you uh, the mindset of the drawing behind it and kind of see the progression of how, how the build has changed starting from the beginning all the way to the end. So as with any idea, um, it mostly started from a lot of reading and a lot of inspiration that I got from seeing other people start sailing. And I was reading a lot of books, not really these in particular, but I was listening to audiobooks about people single-handed sailing around the world. And I thought it was an incredible um, lifestyle they were living. And I have to say my biggest inspiration was George Greeno. Um, which I'll try to post a picture of right here. And he came out with this movie called The Crystal Voyager, in which he builds a sailboat and sails around to the islands, gets surf, and I really fell into his thought of philosophy of trying to find an alternative wave. And that's kind of what inspired me to start my surfboard company in the beginning. Um, a unique surfboard and kind of all of that. But... As time progressed, I kind of not got bored with surfboards, but I wanted to see how to take my surfing to the next level, and boats were definitely that for me. So it all started off with the Flicka. When I was thinking about, I already had a boat, and I already learned how to sail, or I mean as much as one can really learn how to sail, because aren't we always learning? But this Flicka, uh, the boat itself really intrigued me. Um, if you look at it, it's only, look at this, 20 length overall, and then it has that four foot bowsprit on the front, but you can actually stand on the inside of this. I thought it was an incredible that you can have a 20 foot boat that you can stand up and actually live inside of. So I really like that, but then after reading the book and seeing all the work that goes into this, I was like, dang, that's a ton. And it took this guy 10 years to build his Flicka. So I was like... Is that really what I'm trying to be doing? And I gotta give a big shout out to this guy actually. Um, his name's Bob, um, well, Robert Collier. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. And check this out. September 2016, Trevor, may this book serve as an inspiration for your dream sailboat, Bob. And he sent me this book for free, it was incredible. I mean, paid shipping and everything. So I definitely have been inspired and I've been using a lot of his techniques actually to build Tara as she is. But it's, I mean, it's incredible just how much work can go into this. But I don't want to deal with the ballast and all that uh, because you have to put the lead in the bottom of the monoholes. So I started looking for other alternatives. Then I got listening to the, the Jim Brown caper cast. Uh, which I'll try to link in the, the YouTube description. But in that, he talks about multi-holes and the different kinds and his experiences with them and how they're relatively new to the 1960s. So after listening to his uh, podcast and watching his videos, I was super intrigued with the idea of multi-holes and how, many, how new the, the idea was relative to uh, mariculture, or not mariculture, maritime history like if you think about it boats have been sailboats have been around for hundreds of years but this multi-hole at least in the western world has only been around since the 60s i was like hey well maybe that's something i can make and start adding additions to so then i committed to the multi-hole but first i wasn't quite sure that that was the easiest method so this is actually the first design I ever drew, designed by Trevor Parker, but I didn't put a date, but it was probably around 2016 sometime, and um, I designed this, I wanted something I could sleep in, and I could sail out to the islands, and as simple as possible, small, as small and simple as possible. I wanted it to be a monohull, but I didn't want to deal with a keel, because I wanted it to be a flat bottom. So I started researching these, these things called lee boards, and basically they're just like um, rudders or center boards, or uh, yeah, basically a center board but on the exterior. And I was gonna have two, and then we're gonna be ballasted. 
So if it was heavy winds, you would only, if it was light winds, you wouldn't have to have any down. And then you could lower one as it got heavier. And then if your boat's really leaning over, you could put down both. And in addition, they'll help you track forward. So that was my original idea. And that's actually what I started building. Um, if you take a look at this picture here, uh, <laughs> you'll see this little, this is the base. This is the first Instagram photo I posted. And its caption was, Introducing Wavedar. And you can definitely see that it's heavily inspired by a surfboard. Um, if you cut back to this video, you can see, I mean, that piece of wood would be sticking up right here, and there's that, that base. Um, and the kind of funny story about that piece of wood is I was actually trying to bend that, that piece for a surfboard, and it kind of broke, or it wasn't the right angle. And then I just started gluing on those side pieces, and that's how Wavedar begun with a failed surfboard. So, as you can see, the base is very, very, I guess, simple in itself. And that's using the polonia wood, which doesn't soak up salt water. Um, now we'll go down to my Instagram a little bit later. I mean, these are most of my photos that I have, since it's all in the cloud. But here in this photo, you can see I'm starting to get the 3D structure of it. And you'll notice that it's only about eight feet long. Um, right around here it just stops at a, a boxed in stern and that's just because I thought I could sleep in eight feet but then I realized um, oh I realized two things actually if you look at this design you'll see that I erased but right here there was a line right here and right here so this little triangle wasn't there it was actually a boxy nose which made it eight feet I think this made it ten feet it's, it's two feet or so so it was gonna be even smaller but then all my friends finally can convince me that a box nose wouldn't work but I was hoping that it would work kinda like a sabot and it would plane above that boxy nose But as you can see the design grew and if you look at it now you'll tell it grew even more and we will get into that later, but first I wanted to kind of go through some of my old documents and um, see what we can find about it. So this is from my second semester of my junior year of college. And um, oh man, was I going crazy in here. Like this is kind of off topic, but this part of my life, like let's just see some of my drawings that I would do during class. Um, Wow, look at that thing, huh? Just like, complete, not focusing. All right, we're getting off topic here. We're here to talk about boats. Um, so I saved a spot right here. So as you can see, I was like, well, those leave words suck. <laughs> Let's be honest here. So then I was trying to devise a plan to throw some outside holes on it and I was experimenting just with drawing. As you can see all these designs, they're not proportional, I didn't use any ruler measurements. It's just me kind of doing sketches and seeing if it looks cool or not. Um, but as you can tell from the start, I knew I wanted that pilot house, something you can be enclosed in, that was huge to me. And um, I was always trying to do research on the windshield, like which way it should be facing. Should it be facing forward, or now you'll notice in the design, it's kind of like a backwards, more aerodynamic design. And I think that downward slant is good for big boats. A lot of the power boats you'll see, they have something called like a sky bridge, where you're super elevated and you're almost looking down on the boat. So you need to be able to lean forward and look down. So that's kind of why I had that design at first. But you'll see from this, I have this giant rudder. I mean, who knows, that that design could maybe work, but I can just tell from the proportions of this, in reality, the hole wasn't that wide. So I kind of drew that picture wrong. But that didn't work. Um, let's see what else we have here. I think this is just, this was a joke, but I thought it looked kind of cool. Um, <laughs> it's like a tractor. Let's see what it says. 
Telu Segundo Su Su Sungo. I don't know how to say that. Use. Delegated to see throughout the Terra continent and extended traveling stints and sustainability. Power. This craft is powered by wind, solar, and human energy. This can be accomplished by sail, paddle, and solar panel accordingly. Interesting. I just thought it looked cool. And those little, like, I don't even know what those things are. The little, like, measurement. <laughs> I don't know. Good old college. Make you go insane. And then, so I was still stuck with this float, and I was like, how am I going to make this thing not tip over when I'm sailing out to the islands? And, in addition, I needed to fit inside of a normal slip, which is about 10 feet. So, I came up with this one idea where it would, like, there's these rotating floats that could rotate around. Um, in sail mode, you would have both floats on either side of you, or on one side of you. That way, the wind, they would counteract act the wind um let's see what layout this is oh wave dar hey signed by trevor 5617 for 60s not to scale good to know um yeah so there's gonna be some supports what does that say? Purpose. Wavedar is meant for one sailor who wants to beach often and face the sea in its harshest condition. The row mode allows wave jars to require to not require electrical or engine. Row mode. The bow and stern AMA can be moved fore and aft. I think fore has an E in it, but to create a streamlined vessel and simultaneously moves the AMA out of the paddle's way. This allows the user to paddle the vessel when the wind is not available. So then you can go front and backwards and isn't there something about like having a longer length overall makes it more efficient your paddle who knows but not a bad idea i mean who knows maybe it could work but i ended up not going for that and i think in this book that's all <laughs> oh man okay we're gonna leave that book alone so there's some designs coming out of there and then let's see what we got going on here so this book is actually my log book from my first boat. Uh, her name was Uhuru, and she looked a little something like this. A 27-foot Catalina, a little bit, uh, dodger on top. And uh, I'm not going to read this, but it was just like kind of dedicating the log book, let people sign in it, just me going insane. Yeah, I, <laughs> now that I look at this, there's probably a lot of insanity in all these, but just me trying to produce something. Or... Alright, so I finally found the page, and it says, it doesn't have a date, but it says, after this voyage, actually, yeah, so this is around 17, it says, after this voyage, I really, or we're gonna go sideways, after this voyage, I really learned about Uhuru's seaworthiness. The only thing I found uncomfortable was exposure to the wind. I want to build a hard dodger for her in order to keep the skipper dry and alert. Because I was getting rained on hard, and I was very, very cold. Um, so then I cut. And then I started like trying to design that. Let's see what else we got. And I was trying to see like what would work. And I ended up never really getting around to it. And that's just me and my friend talking about catamarans. But, um, yeah, I think that's actually it for that book. So now we're going to fast forward to the next school year. And I haven't actually opened this. But let's see what's here. So it starts off. It looks like we still have that 10-foot boat. Looks like we're going, uh, what do you call it? Trimaran. And I had this one idea that if you look up here at this one, if you notice, this hole, one of the amas, is directly against the hole and the other isn't. So I had this idea that you could trolley your amas either side, depending on which way's windward. That way it would be <laughs> it'd be more narrow, but you'd still get that distance. So I was kind of trying to figure out how to make that work all right so here's my drawing part of the notebook here's wave dar length overall eight feet okay so here's the box <laughs> um with the lead boards that kind of reminds us of uh of that doesn't it 
Uh, the beams, 34 inches. Okay, I think that's still true. J I wanted to have a junk rig, so I wouldn't have to deal with the stays. Keel, ballasted lee boards, options, watertight hull, interior control, beachable, downward, downwind planing. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, it looks cool. It looks kind of safe if it was stout. I like that shading. Ooh, look at this. Another junk rig. What is that, 17? Yeah. So, if you look closely, that has lee boards. Still working with the lee boards. Okay, that's not actually a boat. No, where's that? That's just a nice wave. Alright, sorry about this, guys. I should have definitely prepped. I mean, I guess I could cut this out. Here's an aircraft I was thinking about. <laughs> Look at that, trimaran aircraft. It's the future. Um, that's not actually very dark. Alright, we're gonna have to cut. Here we go. So, as you can see, this is... Oh, that's not it either. Just kind of messing around with designs. Oh wow, there's more. Yeah, just more drawings. I figure the more I draw it, the more I'll understand it. And that's definitely what I did here. So here are these floats, and I want them to pivot on some sort of like dolly that you could pull it one side to the other to give you keep you from capsizing. And I think that's gonna be it. I got some surfboard designs. Oh, here's a good one. All right, so yeah, you can see here again, um, this was actually one of my favorite designs. Ooh, but this is a big transition because if you look, that's new. It usually would stop right here at 10 feet, but then I added on that extra three feet. So this is all where it changed. Is there a date on here? Length overall, 13 feet. Beam's now 33 inches. Something changed. <laughs> I don't actually know how wide it is right now, to be honest. Sailor area, 150 feet, trimaran, beachable, chine runners, adjustable almas. That's what I was talking about with the uh, the metal poles. And flip up rudder. All right. Hmm, interesting. So that's, this is the first design I did that had that changed back. And you can, you look at this picture right here. It'll pop up on the screen, and you can see that <laughs> somebody commented, they said it looked like a rocking chair, and um, yeah, it just stopped right there, and then I had to actually add on the three foot back, and that was kind of difficult to keep the structure running through it, so maybe later <laughs> I'll show you how I ended up doing that, but for now, all you need to know is we added on an extra three feet, so it went from eight feet to 13 feet. And here, back in the notebook, uh, we got more designs. Still doing this adjustable AMA thing, but it has that new three foot thing in the back. Air and water are liquid. All right, me just trying to understand the fluid dynamics. Doesn't make much sense. A little sail airplane. I don't know what that is, BioLite. Oh, those are kind of cool. If you didn't know, there's these stoves you can burn like wood in, and they actually use uh, thermoelectric generators, so you can make electricity. Here's a pretty cool idea. 60s Wavedar Hydrofoil. This design uses a Hobie 16 mast sails and outriggers. They will be attached by I-beams. The freeboard on the Hobie's hull is far less than the center Wavedar hull. The difference will be filled by hydrofoils. These will serve to either assist the Hobie's holes not to broach, or at top speed may suspend the outriggers out of the water. The hydrofoils share the same draft as the hole so they can stay static when waved our speech versus, I guess, coming up like a daggerboard. And I think the hydrofoil idea is actually a pretty good idea. This one may be radical because that may lift the boat, but who knows, maybe I'll still put some hydrofoils on the, the prindle holes that I have right now. I think it's, um, it's a pretty cool concept, especially for anti-broaching, you know? Because we all know those beach cats want to broach, especially when you're going down the waves. Alright, I think that is it for that notebook. Thank you for sharing. Let's see what else we got on this bed of wonderfulness. 
we have this sketchbook over here. So this is when I was like, all right, time to get serious. I need to actually draw, um, draw some proper drawings. So with, with numbers and, you know, actually use a ruler for once. So here's my first, this is when I still thought I was going to be a junk rig. If you'll notice, I know the lines are faint. Sorry, it's not that good. But basically it's a junk rig and here's the hole. So let's see what's the same, what's similar. So I just did the windows today. I haven't posted a video on that, but the windows look the same. I think my ratio, there's some measurement. This looks a little bit wide. It doesn't look like that in real life. And after I drew all this, I actually found out a couple things. It, I realized I was gonna have to throw on some sort of reinforcement to this. And so I built that after doing this drawing. Um, if you notice in this drawing, there's actually these wings. And um, I've been kind of flirting with the idea and I'm thinking that I may actually end up implementing them, but I want them to be a little bit higher and I want it to be like a pop-up tent. So we'll get into that later. But this is the first time where those wings kind of came out because I thought it looked, kind of has a nice flow to it. You know, give them, given a trimarine wings. So all of this has measurements on it. Um, most of the time I don't do things that accurately. But yeah. And then here's me coming up with the name. Just throwing some names out there. Sylvia, Morgan, Adira, Wendy, <laughs> with an eye. I've got somebody's name there about that. And then me trying to figure out how I'm gonna support the Prindle holes. Like, I figured out that has to be the shape. So this is kind of my design. I get the general idea, and then I'll go outside and get the perfect measurements. So that's the front, and that's the back. And those are gonna be glassed into the holes, and then they'll attach to Tara. And then just me asking myself questions. How must the support be cut to ensure max contact? Just me thinking on paper, basically. Um, let's see what's here. So here, you'll see, this is a drawing of Tara. This is all sketched out, so this is not the scale at all. But you'll see in this one, I have a little circle. Too late, I already made the cut, so that's that design's not happening anymore. Um, little scuppers in there. That's pretty updated. Um, let's see what else is new. We got hydrofoils on this one, so I'm still kind of thinking about doing that. I don't know how to build foils or how I would install metal ones, but broaching is unacceptable, you know? <laughs> if you bro if a boat has potential to broach, that's not safe. So this is actually the first drawing I did to figure out how to build I guess you guys haven't seen it. I need to do an update video, but I've built this already. Um, they're basically two bulkheads that the mast step fits into, and then the mast fits on that like a sleeve. So just kind of drew the insides of it. It doesn't look like this. I was thinking about having the hole go over that, but it didn't look that good. Here's a zoomed in drawing of the cockpit. Um, Here's the scuppers. In real life, I ended up actually just doing three holes in the back. Um, I guess I could do more. There's no reason not to, but... Let's see, what was I thinking about doing? Flexible or rigid pipe? Oh yeah. At first, before I figured out about scuppers, I didn't even know what they were. I was thinking about doing a little hole here. They would pipe down to here, but I was thinking, the water line may go up there and water may come in. So that was interesting. And then I was also thinking about filling this up with foam as like insulation. But I tried that and I used this certain type of foam that resin melts. <laughs> so that idea kind of got destroyed and I melted some foam. This is just some brainstorming. This is a more zoomed in version of that other drawing. Let's see what I did. Semi-bulkheads. 
me just te testing stuff. If I get an idea, I'll draw it just to see if it looks ugly. For example, this, and that looks ugly. <laughs> I thought maybe it could help the flow, but it doesn't. All right. Just understanding the shape more. And I think when you can draw something out of your head, like that's how you know you understand it, just being able to sketch it. So I'm always just trying to sketch, sketch it. Here's some 60 stuff, let's see. Wow. <laughs> Look at all this stuff, this is, this is weird stuff. Tara. <laughs> Purple, hey, those are the bulkheads <laughs> that I just installed. The novelist who knows how the story will unfold will bore before the story is written. True that. Mathematical symmetry. All right, well, none of this, humbled by the sea and the compass, none of this makes any sense. But as you can see, there is a lot that goes on behind the works. Um, I think that's what this video is all about. Just kind of showing you how I'm designing and how the design has progressed. And um, yeah, so I think now that we went over that, y'all, maybe be more intrigued to start drawing your own. Um, if you're wanting to design your own boat, I'd highly recommend it. But what skills does it take? Well, mine's not successful yet, so I'm not actually a valid source to give recommendations. But I think from most of my building and like surfboard designs and the things that I've designed, if I can draw it, I can usually build it because you can take the drawing and figure out the proportions from that. And I mean, just looking at something on paper, you can really see if it's gonna work or if it's not going to. But if you can't draw it, then I don't know, work with somebody who can. Um, I think, especially multi-holes and hydrofoils, I think it needs a lot more testing and a lot more people building. Like if you think of surfboards in the surfboard industry, there's a lot of people out there, sorry the camera's all shaky, but um, there's a lot of people who uh, are out there designing surfboards and making surfboards and kind of pushing the new radical designs, but I feel sailboats right now, I haven't seen that many radical ones, at least in my area, so I'm trying to recommend as many people as possible start making, trying to design new boat ideas because that's what's gonna progress the culture and the industry and hopefully make boating better than it was yesterday, you know? And once again, a little plug to the company here, the60s.com, um, the business that doesn't make any money or is really even a business. It's just about pushing forward design of anything that has to do with the ocean, really. And maybe airplanes in the future. No, we'll stick with Tara for now. So thanks for watching. Sorry I haven't been making that many videos. If you really want content and you're really into this stuff, what I can totally recommend to you is um, the Jim Brown podcast and all his videos on YouTube. Super cool. Huge inspiration to me. I'd recommend the George Greeno Crystal Voyager movie on YouTube. You can find it in like six parts by Mullis Surfshop. I'll also link that. And um, if you're trying to get more into like weird stuff on the website, go to the explore section and go into the blog or go just keep clicking around on the website and you'll keep finding these weird spots. So if you're bored, there's plenty for you to do before I make the next video, but I'm getting pretty lazy at building or making videos because I just want to focus on the building versus video like recording, and I don't want to get resin or fiberglass on my phone. So yeah, I hope to hear from you guys soon. Please comment below. We got a couple comments on the other video that was cool, um, and subscribe. Um, Hopefully this boat floats. All right, fair wind and fair waves, everyone. See you next time.